Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. I'm going to provide a link to the anniversary that I've already covered for today. And since I've already covered it, we're going to get back to Kermit Gosnell. And in this specific case, again, the failures of the Department of Health. Um, they knew that the place was nasty. And they didn't bother to look because they didn't want to see. Let's go into a little bit more. Since February 2010, that's the date of the raid of Gosnell's clinic when they could no longer pretend it wasn't disgusting and that they didn't know it was disgusting, Department of Health officials have reinstated regular inspections of abortion clinics, finding authority in the same statute they used earlier to justify not inspecting. Stolowski blamed the decision to abandon supposedly annual inspections of abortion clinics on DOH lawyers, who she said changed their legal opinions and advice to suit the policy preferences of different governors. Under Governor Robert Casey, she said, the department inspected abortion facilities annually. Yet when Governor Tom Rich came in, the attorneys interpreted the same regulations that had permitted annual inspections for years to no longer authorize those inspections. Then only complaint driven inspections supposedly were authorized. Stolowski said that the DOH's policy during Governor Ridge's administration was motivated by a desire not to be putting a barrier up to women seeking abortions. Brody confirmed some of what Stolowski told the grand jury. He described a meeting of high-level government officials in 1999 at which a decision was made not to accept a recommendation to reinstate regular inspections of abortion clinics. The reasoning, as Brody recalled, was there was a lot of concern that if they did routine inspections, they may find a lot of those facilities didn't meet the standards for getting patients out by stretcher or wheelchair in an emergency, and that then there would be less abortion facilities, less access to women to have an abortion. Brody testified that he did not consider the access issue a legal one. The Abortion Control Act, he told the grand jurors, charges DOH with protecting the health and safety of women having abortions and premature infants aborted alive. To carry out this responsibility, he said DOH should regularly inspect the facilities. Nevertheless, the position of DOH remained the same after Edward Rendell became governor. Using the legally faulty excuse that the department lacked the authority to inspect abortion clinics, Stolowski left them unmonitored, presumably with the knowledge and blessing of her bosses, Deputy Secretary Stacy Mitchell and a succession of Secretaries of Health. The department continued its do-nothing policy until 2010 when media attention surrounding the raid of the Gosnell Clinic exposed the results of years of hands-off oversight. Now, once again, the regulations, which had never been modified, apparently allow for regular inspections. This is and always was the correct position. The state legislature gave DOH the duty to enforce its regulations. The authority and power to do so are implicit in that duty. The department abandoned this responsibility without explanation and without notice to the public or the legislature. Whatever its motivation, DOH's deliberate policy decision not to conduct regular inspections of abortion clinics did not serve the women of this commonwealth nor did it protect late-term fetuses or viable babies born alive. The grand jury heard testimony from legitimate abortion providers and from abortion rights advocates, and not one indicated that annual inspections would be unduly burdensome. Frankly, I think that they did that to throw Gosnell under the bus. Because if you listen to what they say in public, as you don't need the state to come in and inspect these clinics, they're fine. Those are trap laws targeted regulation of abortion providers. They're, they're totally above reproach. That's, pay attention when they do their press conferences, whenever health and safety regulations are proposed. They're against it tooth and nail. Just no, not acceptable, don't need it. But they're telling the grand jury, oh, it's not a barrier. The doctors we heard from and the organizations that refer women to abortion providers told us that the reputable providers comply with all state regulations and more. Funny, I guess they assumed that Gosnell was following them when they referred to him. Annual inspections are not an issue with them. Many clinics in Pennsylvania are already inspected by NAF, National Abortion Federation, whose standards are in many ways more protective of women's safety than the state's regulations. Their standards indeed are. 
National Abortion Feder Federation, they don't call it standards, they call it clinical guidelines. That way it's guidelines and you're not actually required to do it. And um, I listened to National Abortion Federation tapes and they called them clinical guidelines rather than standards in order to protect their members in lawsuits so that they couldn't be told, well, you weren't following the standards. Well, those are mere guidelines. We don't have to follow them. But if they did enforce them, they would make the abortion clinics very safe. Without regular inspections, providers like Gosnell continue to operate. Unlawful and dangerous third trimester abortions go undetected and many women, especially poor women, suffer. These are all consequences of DOH's abdication of its responsibility. Moreover, moreover even if Stolowski was instructed not to conduct regular annual inspections, this does not explain why she failed to order inspections when complaints were received. It is clear to us that she was made aware numerous times that serious incidents had occurred at Gosnell's clinic. These incidents, which evidenced alarming as well as illegal long-standing patterns of behavior, warranted investigation. Yet in all the years she worked at the department, Stolowski never ordered even one inspection. And it kind of reminds me of Janice Compton Carr of the Florida Abortion Council when she was referring to Dadeland, which was not as bad as Gosnell, but it was certainly bad. She said, in my gut, I am totally aghast at what goes on in this place, but I staunchly oppose anything that would correct this situation in law. Not even Karnamaya Mongar's death triggered an inspection or investigation. On November 4, 24, 2009, Gosnell sent a fax to the department, followed by a letter addressed to Stolowski, notifying DOH that Karnamaya Mongar had died following an abortion at his clinic. Gosnell's letter inaccurately stated that the second day of her procedure was November 18th. Darlene Augustin, a registered nurse, nurse and health quality administrator in the department's Division of Home Health, received the facts. And for some bizarre reason, the Department of Home Health oversaw, is supposed to oversee abortion clinics. Augustine, who supervisors surveyors who respond to and investigate complaints at healthcare facilities, testified that she immediately notified her boss, Cynthia Boyne. Boyne had become director of DOH's Division of Home Health in 2007 when Stolowski was promoted to head of the Bureau of Community Licensure and Certification. Augustine said that she told Boyne on November 25th that DOH should immediately go out to the clinic and initiate an investigation. Augustine acknowledged that she generally had the authority to send investigators send surveyors out to investigate, and she often did so within an hour of receiving notice of a serious event such as a death. She testified, however, that she felt she needed Director Boyne's approval because Gosnell's notice involved an abortion clinic. Different standards for abortion clinics, they do not have to be safe, as safe as other facilities. Boyne did not give her approval. Instead, she went to the bureau director, Stolowski, to discuss the matter. Augustine explained that abortion clinics were treated differently from other medical facilities because Stolowski had for years overseen the department's handling of complaints and inspections, or lack of inspections, relating to abortion clinics. Stolowski, according to Augustine, was the ultimate decision maker with respect to whether DOH would conduct an inspection or investigation. Augustine testified that neither Boyne nor Stolowski ever gave approval to conduct the investigation she thought was appropriate. Boyne blamed Stolowski. She said that her boss told her that DOH did not have the authority to investigate Mrs. Mongar's death. Stolowski apparently reached this decision on her own without ever consulting Brody, the legal counsel. Well, we already know Brody would have told her no. Stolowski, according to Boyne, was only interested in making sure that Gosnell filed an online report in accordance with a 2002 law, the Medical Care Ability, Availability and Reduction of Error Act. That law requires healthcare facilities to report serious events, including deaths to DOH. Stolowski's plan, Boyne said, was to then charge Gosnell with failing to file the report in a timely and proper manner. This is absurd and Boyne should not have accepted such a ridiculous idea. Gosnell had reported Mrs. Mongar's to death, death to DOH on November 24, 2009. Well, this was three or four days late and the notification came by fax and letter rather than computer. It is preposterous to think that Stolowski, who had ignored two deaths and other serious injuries at the clinic, would take action against a doctor for filing a report three days late. 
Stolowski was absolutely wrong about DOH's lack of authority to investigate Mrs. Mongar's death. Appallingly, the chief counsel for the Department of Health, Christine Dutton, defended Stolowski's inaction following Mrs. Mongar's death. Dutton testified that she had reviewed the emails and documents showing that Stolowski and her staff were communicating with Gosnell's office to get him to file the MCARE form. Based on these very minimal efforts, Dutton insisted, we were responsive. Pushed as to whether the death of a woman following an abortion should have prompted more action, perhaps an investigation or a report to law enforcement, Dutton argued that there was no reason to think the death was suspicious. People die, she said. And I will provide a link if I can to the scene in the Gosnell movie where we have uh, this testimony. Um, the grand jury uh, scenes in the Gosnell movie were pretty much taken verbatim from actual testimony. Not only was a probe into Mrs. Mongar's death authorized and appropriate under the Abortion Control Act, it was required under the MCARE law. Yet DOH did not investigate. Stolowski told the grand jury that she remembered reviewing with Boyne the letter in which Gosnell notified DOH of Mrs. Mongar's death. Stolowski said that it was really Boyd's, Boyne's responsibility to order an investigation, but acknowledged that she, as bureau director, had also failed to do so. Instead of conducting an investigation, Stolowski and Boyne concerned themselves with badgering Gosnell to re-notify them of Ms. Mongar's death. Bureau Director Stolowski, in fact, readily acknowledged many deficiencies in DOH's and her own oversight of abortion facilities, but her dismissive demeanor indicated to us that she did not really understand or care about the devastating impact that the department's neglect had had on the women whom Gosnell treated in his filthy, dangerous clinic. I have doubts about whether she actually cared. Stolowski excused the DOH practices that enabled Gosnell to operate in the manner that killed Ms. Shaw, Mrs. Mongar, and an untold number of babies. She simply said that abortion regulations written by DOH do not require DOH to inspect abortion clinics. When DOH inspectors finally entered Gosnell's clinic in February 2010, not at Stolowski's direction, but at the urging of law enforcement, Stolowski seemed more annoyed than appalled or embarrassed. On the morning after the raid, she received a copy of an email that Boyne wrote to Brody the night of the raid. Boyne reported to the department's senior counsel that, at 12.45 a.m., she told the Department of Health staff members at the clinic to wrap it up and secure lodging in the interest of their safety. I'm not sure what that meant. Boyne told Brody that the staff walked into a very difficult setup. She complained that a representative of, the district's, uh, representative of the district attorney's office was badgering DOH staff to shut down the facility immediately. Boyne was seeking Brody's legal guidance. Stolowski's response to Boyne's email was, I'd say we were used. Boyne's reply, bingo. Stolowski, the woman most directly responsible for the department's oversight of abortion facilities, told the grand jury, I haven't been in any facilities and probably in an abortion facility in many, many years. The citizens of Pennsylvania deserve far better from those charged with protecting public health and safety.